Good afternoon, welcome to the show, welcome to Give It A Nudge. Today we have Ryan and Jamie down from the Gold Coast to talk about their business partner. Excited because I met these guys, gosh, what was it? Maybe a month ago, something like that? Ago, yeah. Uh, yeah, no concept of time. But I'm not gonna talk about partner, I want you guys to talk about partner. Ryan, I'm gonna let, start with you and I will point to you or ask you who I'm asking so you don't talk over each other because that's always awkward. But why don't you first explain who you are and what the business is and we'll come to you, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, so who are you, mate? Um, I'm a, just a small town country boy. Actually, I watched one of the videos the other day of Belinda and she actually stole my line. <coughs> she is from the country, I remember. She is, yeah. And uh, my line is, I'm a small town country guy giving it a go in software. And is I that what she said? She said she's a small town country girl giving it a go in tech. I was like, B, that's, that's my line. <laughs> you know what? It was ages ago, don't worry. Yeah, People will forget. forget. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, mate, and Partners, a brand to brand collaboration platform. And what we do is we match brands together that share a similar customer. So if you're, a 18, if you're a brand that sells to 18 year old, 35 year old females that care about sustainability wellness, we match you up so you can share customer information, cross promote products, services to ultimately win more customers. Yeah, and we actually need to talk because we wanted to talk to you guys about Bounce the Grind, our other business, which we will do, not today because this is not a Bounce the Grind podcast, this is a Give It a Nudge podcast. We have a podcast for that too. <laughs> That's only voice. Um, and Jamie, tell me about you. Mate, I'm originally from Wollongong and moved up to the Gold Coast when I was in early 20s and um, fumbled around a bit after I, I played soccer and ended up doing e-com. So I've, I've started, founded and sold four e-com stores. Four? Yeah. And um, I was in the cool. fitness industry, that's how I met this guy. Yep. And just as a membership sales consultant in sales. Hardest sales role <laughs> in the world, other than maybe conference sales, which I think is probably up there with the same. <laughs> you love sales. I didn't love it, no. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I think I gravitated to e-com. Yep. I did pretty well there and we, we had this idea and we've um, started to give it a go. So how did you two meet? I'll stick with you. We worked at a, it was called Phoenix Fitness, it's now Good Life. Yep. And I think he was the sales manager. This was going back about 13 or so years yep. ago now. And yeah, we worked together. We had a great time. It was a pretty cool atmosphere there. It was pretty fun. We were pretty young. Yeah. Um, and then we kind of went our separate ways. He went software, I went e-com. And funny enough, we started experiencing the same problem at the same time and come together. Interesting. In the business. And fit, look, fitness is, I love the fitness. We've had quite a few fitness. If you've watched some of the shows, yeah. there's quite, been quite a lot of fitness. <coughs> um, had the Pilates guy on the other day. That was a good episode, actually. Yep. Um, okay, so what was the problem? You both encountered this problem. You're in software, country yeah. boy, soccer player in sales, gone to e-com. <laughs> You're both experiencing the problem. What the hell is this problem that you both could have experienced where you've gone out this way that, brought, that converged you back together? So they'll, they'll, similar problem in, in different examples. So uh, with I had a marketplace for gyms, so people can find a join a gym in the area. Yep. I had that for five years. And uh, the way I got the wheels turning with that business was the bread and butter was getting gyms on the platform, right? Mm -hmm. And so I went to uh, business mentors, governing bodies, and said, hey, if you put your clients on the platform, I'll share the revenue with you. Yep. So I knew partnerships worked in, in that domain. And Jamie, on the other hand, with the econ brands, he was always doing brand-to-brand -brand collaborations. And he was doing influencer collaborations, right? Yep. So easy way to get new customers. Uh, so we knew that worked. And then this thing changed in terms of iOS updates, right? And so app tracking transparency became a, a real pain in the butt for not only e-commerce people, but all marketers, because mm -hmm. people can't accurately find their target audience now. <clears throat> so uh, I was, uh, at, when I finished that startup, I took a role as a, um, an equity position in a local startup on the Gold Coast. And the way I was growing that business was through partnerships. Yep. Jamie took the role as a CMO when he closed his last business, uh, sold his last business, and uh, he was a CMO doing partnerships, and he called me one day and he's like, man, I'm reaching out to all of these brands, some get back to me, some stuff me around, I'll eventually get a partnership together, and he goes, surely there's this one place where I can just say, here's who I am, here's who I want to partner with, and have people come to me. Aha moment. I was like, no, I don't think there is, mate, let's have a look. So. We spent a couple of weeks looking high and low if we could find that solution, but we couldn't find it, so we said, stuff it, let's build it ourselves. And so did you both just quit right there and then and, and start it, or did you side hustle it, or how did that sort of come about? 
Well, we, uh, we're pretty loose and fast sort of guys. Um, we built a one-page <laughs> landing page. <laughs> Don't know what to say to that. We're just going to let that fly through. <laughs> This will explain. We'll get some good comments when this video comes out about that. We might, we might even use that as the promo. <laughs> Loose and fast founders. Yeah. Um, no, we, we built a one-page landing page. Yep. Uh, we brought the, the URL partner. Yep. Built a deck, six-page deck. Yep. Put some designs together in Figma, thinking this is what it will roughly look like, and then started pitching it to brands. So yep. I was still doing partnerships at the... Yep. Jamie's still the CMO, doing this in the afternoons and whatnot. And every brand was saying, yes, when it's built, we'll love to be a part of it. Who are you going to? Uh, LinkedIn, any business, anyone, any connections that we had, cold outreach. Right, so there was no, you know, target audience, you just thought we're just going to blanket and see, see what sticks kind of thing. We, yep, we just yeah. wanted feedback. And everyone was saying, yeah, when it's ready, sign me up, we'll do it. And we said, okay, it's going to be about, you know, 200 a month, 400 a month. They're like, yeah, yeah, fine. And we're like, it doesn't really validate for us. So we created a Stripe account sent them a Stripe invoice and said, hey, if you pay for 12 months in full, we'll give you a discount, it's $5,000. And we had two brands pay it. And we were like, we, we had nothing. We don't have a platform, we don't have a developer, we, no, we, had, we had 10 grand. <laughs> do the brands who paid that know this now? Now they do, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> but yeah, that, that was validation for us. Absolutely. Yeah. So we'd been through this process a few times before of starting businesses and the challenge is you chat to everyone, everyone's like, yeah, yeah this is awesome, it's gonna be cool, cool, but unless they give everyone you their cash. That. Exactly. Particularly if they're not doing it. Yeah, I've noticed that. Well, you both had experience of running your own businesses, which I think accounts, accounts for a lot, right? I think, obviously, we have a lot of founders on this show. Um, and the difference between how a first-time founder goes about it, which is just totally madness, and do yeah. the strangest things towards someone like you guys who've done it before, where you actually look for that validation, is something that hopefully, by watching the show, they'll learn. Um, because, yeah, I mean, that, I mean to get 5,000, that's a big ask for a non-existent product that you've done no demo on. It's pretty impressive. We won't talk about who those brands are. So, okay, so, um, so Jamie, what do you do then? Right, you've got 10 grand sitting in your account. Is that, okay, well, we better build something. Neither of you can code, I'm guessing. No, we can't. So, no. what do you do? Scrambled for a, a oh. developer. I bet you did. <laughs> <laughs> and how long ago was this? Like two years? No, two years? This, we launched a platform on the 6th of July, 2022. So, oh, like, wow. 12 months ago. 12 months ago. Yeah, and there yeah. were no developers 12 months ago. Like, there were none. No. Like there, was, no. there was zero. And if there were any, they were like 190,000 a year. So, did you go overseas? How did, how, or did you yeah. know one? What did you do? Yeah, we sourced one overseas. Yeah. I think we, we hit the gold mine with one. With, with Which is very rare. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's very good. That's fantastic. Oh, to be fair, we went through one. Oh, Got yeah, we had some clangers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <we'd> and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, let's not get into offshore right now. <laughs> we haven't got time for that. Um, and so, I mean, even so, you've got 10 grand. People are probably expecting something relatively quickly. You don't build a platform like that. I mean, you would have had some, well, obviously, you had a marketplace, and they're not as complicated as building a very heavy product featured sort of platform. But how quickly did you get it up? I think, I, which was playing on our side that we wanted to make the platform simple. And of course, there's, there's intricacies of making stuff simple, but we, <laughs> we've, we thought of just building it in stages. What's the MVP that we can get out there that can make some like, um, positive results for our clients yep. straight away? So we build it and with the intention of every week just making it better and better. Right, okay. And so, what, what happened then? We'll go back to you. What, what, so you've got your product up and running now. The people who paid five grand hopefully have got some level of confidence, but kind of going, does it really pay five grand for this? Because it's pretty simple. Um, where does it go from there? And actually, before we do that, what's your, how have you split your roles, right? So you're, you've obviously both run businesses. It sounds like you've got more of a sales bent, you've got more of a marketing bent. How, there's a lot more roles in sales and marketing in, in a business. How have you split that now as co-founders? Uh, now it's very, <laughs> we're, we're still figuring it out, to be honest. Yep. Um, because, like I said, we're loose and fast, so we just dive in. But You've got to stop saying that. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but as it's as it's evolved, we've had to evolve with it. Yep. So mine's very much uh, anything to do with with sales, new customers, um, investor communications, presenting, anything like that. Yep. And then Jamie does a lot of the customer service, uh, okay. the marketing side of it. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, so right, you built your platform, you've got your two customers. I'm assuming that you just keep going. Is that is that pretty much what happened from there? Basically, um, we, we, we figured out we, we've got something here, and that was like a month or two. So we started to just put some feelers out with investors, and uh, with, the, with the objective of going, let's just start to build the relationship with them. Yep. So we weren't necessarily going in saying, hey, we want cash. We're just saying we want to let you know what we're doing. 
for in the future if we do need Where are we in the world right now? Are we November? Or are we, what, what sort of timing are we talking Launched about? Launched on the 6th of July. Yeah. We signed a term sheet on the 6th of September. Which was good timing in hindsight. Yeah. Perfect timing. Couldn't have been better. Couldn't have been better. <laughs> Loose yeah. and fast. Loose and fast. <laughs> Loose and, you got to stop saying that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, did you just sign one investor, two? Did you get lots of interest? How did that? Because raising money, there's no, there's no rhyme or reason to it. People think there's a dark art. People think there's a way, there's a structure. There is, but really, a lot of it's luck, timing, what that person's thinking about the time. It's, it's almost like dating. There's, there's, there's so much circumstances in term, involved in that. How, I'm not going to ask you how much you raised unless you want to tell me, but who did you end up going with? Was it private investors initially and then you're looking at VCs later? Give me some ideas. So we did about 30 presentations. Yeah, that's a lot. Yep, yeah, heaps. Um, we had three, four that were serious. Uh, we ended up going with Scalata Ventures down in Melbourne. Oh, yes. I knew this because I know them. Yeah. Um, couldn't be happier that we made that choice with them. Yeah. Um, great group. Uh, very strong um, uh, very strong members of the team, um, and without them, I, I don't think we would have been able to accelerate as fast as we have. Yeah, it's a cool office. Not just the cash. I like their office too. Yeah, great office. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you've got some money. Um, you've got some money from customers. You've got some money from investors. I mean, you, you wanted proof. You, you've got your proof. Um, fast forward to to now. What what's happened in that brief time? Have you bought on a whole heap of brands? Obviously, the platform's bought out. Give me some ideas of what's happened during that time. To, to, let's go to present day. Yeah, we have got a heap of brands in there, and we, we went really wide, right? Yep. So we said any business that wants to do partnerships, come in. But the challenge with that is, is with all marketplaces, you, you sort of miss the opportunity for to build verticals. Yeah. And uh, a lot of brands don't get the experience they want because there's not many opportunities for their that to leverage the customers. So um, we started to go narrow. So we went everyone, then we went, okay, let's do uh, online retail, direct-to-consumer brands, mm -hmm. and SaaS products. Okay. And that's sort of how it's evolved at the moment. But th it's probably 75% direct-to-consumer brands at the moment. Okay, which is an interesting space right now. Um, and the reason I say that is because there's stacks and stacks of direct-to-consumer startups in an environment where living costs are going through the roof. So it's a tough time for them. So partnerships and brands are super important because it's expensive to go and win customers or buy customers online. And so you're more the customer side. What's the onboarding process like for a brand? Is it a self-serve thing? Do they come on and spend a week with you playing soccer and get to know you? <laughs> or how does, how does that work? What's the experience like? If I was a brand and I was going, you know what? I've got a direct customer product. I'm loving this partner um, site. I want to get on this marketplace. How does it work from there? Yeah, so we've got a couple of options or a couple of plans. So a brand can go self-service and they can, you know, figure it out themselves and, and the platform's quite intuitive. Otherwise, we have some other managed services or we try and get in, in touch with everyone that joins and then jump on a demo and try and just learn a lot about their business yep. and what their goals are and, and how we can help them as best as possible. Yep. Whether that's um, showing them how to use the platform or giving them... Um, introductions to brands that are inside the platform that okay, we know cool. quite well and are interested to partner. Excellent. And I, I would have thought, how many go self-serve? I wouldn't have thought many. Not, yeah. It's no. a low percentage compared that, That'll to, come. Especially the way our funnel works. Most of the brands go through a demo with us first yep. and then they get started. I think it speaks to as well, one thing that we figured out is that, or identified, not figured out, was that uh, brands want to do partnerships they get stuck, they don't know how to do them. And they don't know the commercials. You know what I see, that's the problem. They're like, how much should I ask? Am I giving it away? Is it too expensive? That's probably one of the hardest parts of doing. We recently created a partnership agreement. I'm sure it's wrong. I'm, in my heart, I know it's wrong, but we had to try something, something right? Because yeah. you just don't know. Yeah. And so well, how do you help in that respect? Well, they're most of the brands that are on the managed service stuff, right? So we help them with identifying what assets do you have? So it could be email issues, social following, how many orders do you have going out a week? And what's the objective of what you want to achieve? Some brands just want to use it as a reach tool. We want to build our brand awareness in these categories. Yep. At the end of the day, it's always about new customer acquisition. That's what everyone wants. Of course. So we just help them understand what are the assets you have, what's the objective you want to achieve, and then what's that operating procedure to get there. Okay. Now, we talked briefly, but I didn't have a lot of time before, about where you're going. 
I want to know because I can think of so many things you can do, which I'm not going to share with you because I want you to share with me. <laughs> where, let's keep, stay with you. Where, it, where in your eyes, you know, you've got this business, it's validated, you're invested, you're, you're, you're in a great place in a very, very short period of time in what is arguably not a great market for B2C or investment or anything right now. Um, where's it go? What do you, what do you, what's the, what's the plans, the immediate plans? And then we'll talk a little maybe about the longer term ones with you in a sec. So at the moment, we're just building an integration with Shopify, yep. which allows um, Shopify merchants to integrate some of their data. So what we'll do is we'll read their customer list, their subscriber list. We'll look at what their average order value is, frequency of order, and then they can use that first party data they've collected about their customer and then map that with other potential partners. So if we cool. were to partner together, we could see that, geez, Steve, 10% of our customers are overlapping. 10% of my customers, your customers. 20% of our subscribers are overlapping. There's a strong synergy to show that our customers care about the similar things, right? And then over time, the long-term play of this is to go, imagine we've got 5,000 direct-to-consumer brands integrating, pulling this data into the platform. Then you log in, you create your account, and in real time, you can see, geez, 10% of my customers are showing interest in travel and leisure. 5% of my customers are starting to show up in wellness and, and, and beauty. This is real-time data that brands can't get from anywhere else. No, mm. it's probably the most, who owns that data? Well, the brands do. So we've got some pretty cool stuff that anonymizes the data, yep. so they don't have to get too worried about that. Yep. Um, but they'll always own their own data, yeah. we won't. Because the data's like, I mean, the value in that, is it data or is it data? I never really know. Yeah. Anyway, the, I, it, that's like, I mean, that's where, in, from a retail point of view, that, that's the most valuable thing in the world, right? The most valuable thing in the world. As you said, advertisers, brands, they've all lost this ability to track and monitor everyone, even though everything you say, your phone listens to, which we yeah. can't talk about here. Um, but it's, it, that's going to be amazing. Yep. Fantastic. And what, and what about longer term? Because you're talking about retail now and you've got B2B SaaS. Like you said, most of your ones are retail. Obviously, you're going to keep pushing the B2B SaaS. Do you see build, you building this platform out across every kind of aspect, every kind of brand? Like, for example, um, Balance the Grime, which I wanted to talk to you about, is a media publication. It's not really about selling, it's about gaining an audience. You know, is that something that would work with your product now? Or is that something that will come down the track? Yeah, I think it definitely will. There's, we've got a couple ideas around how, how we can um, leverage like uh, editors and stuff like that. Eyeballs, that's about winning eyeballs, right? Yeah. As opposed and to sort of selling for our, something. For our brand to be able to get in front of and leverage those audiences that you do have. Yeah. Just give them like kind of one click options to activate partnerships and, and get in front of those. And audiences. I guess, is there, a, is there an option, I'll go back to you, around influencers? Like I think there's all these agencies popped up will max you with influencers. I haven't seen anyone doing particularly well yet. Um, and now there's more influencers than there are brands. But is that something that you could bring into this as well? Because that is a partnership and a collaboration. But if you could make it data backed rather than just, oh, they've got another product that's similar, well, maybe you don't want it use them and you want to use someone who's different but I guess if you could use real-time data around that that would be incredibly valuable yeah I think it's it's one thing that we thought about maybe two or three months ago is because you've got tribe and that they do yep. really well with direct-to-consumer brands but there's nothing in the b2b space and if you look at some LinkedIn profiles some of those people are very influential yeah. right? that can really communicate a brand's message for someone and no one's playing in that space but the challenge that we have is that if we start, if we keep growing the direct to consumer side, it sort of runs in conflict with the platform. So okay. I think it's running in our back of our minds going, is it something that we want to do? Perhaps. We and need to stay focused. On you do need to stay focused. I'm yeah. really bad at that. Um, <laughs> should probably tell. But um, you do need to stay focused. I guess, for you, where is the business now? Is it still just the two of you? Yeah, and a developer and we've got some freelancers. Okay, and is the plan to sort of I guess, how are you going to build that team out? And is the plan to raise money? Is the plan to really sort of hone in and get product people? Because you guys have got quite mixed backgrounds. I guess you'll get to a point where you start nearly, and we see this with all startups, right? You need people like you, the zero to ones who can do everything. And then you suddenly get to a point where you go, actually, that's now way beyond my comprehension. At least I'm going to go and do 15 courses and learn it. Or we go and hire a specialist product person or a specialist marketing or whatever it be. Yeah. Is that something that you guys have thought and talked about yet? 
Uh, yes and no. I think we're, we're really focused on just finding product market fit at the moment. Yeah. Um, getting to break even, so we're cash flow positive at least. Because um, that's really important in this climate. Very rare. Yeah. <laughs> Very rare. Yeah. You come on the show when you do that 100%, just because no one ever comes on the show cash flow positive. <laughs> well, we're, we're trending towards it, um, which is great. Uh, but the, f the first phase is getting there, finding somewhat level of product market fit. We know we won't achieve it just yet. And then just building a repeatable sales model. Yep. Um, once we can get that, we'll raise more money. Yeah, okay, cool. And I guess, you, you know, this, you both had businesses before. This business is probably different to both of the things you've done before, although it's similar to both of the things you've done before as well. I guess, what was the thing, and I, I want both of you to answer both of these questions, um, and I don't care who starts. But I guess, what's the thing that you felt you brought with you the most that has been most useful? And then what was the thing that has completely, completely caught you off guard and stuffed you up that you never saw it coming, even though you've run multiple businesses? I'm going to start with you because you've run lots of businesses. Yeah, I'll start. I think the one that's... <laughs> well, you're ready for this, <laughs> weren't you? <Yeah. laughs> the one that's, I guess, been the most tricky, trickiest for me is in my previous life at Ecom, it's, it's always been myself and I've always run it really lean and leveraged VAs. So I haven't had to deal with people much at all. Like Ryan. <laughs> Not that's is, that, is this the biggest challenge? Is he sitting right here? Because you know he can hear you, right? <laughs> I've more so me. the client, like, you know, face, yeah. like talking like this. Yeah, like, okay. It's not one of my strengths. Well, you're getting, you're getting better at it right now. Oh, hopefully. <laughs> I don't know. And what was the, okay, so if that's been the hardest thing or the, or the most unusual thing, what, what do you think was the, the thing that you'd learned in your previous experience that, that really helped you? And you might not even be, I, what the open, I ask this question, people don't even know because it's subconscious. Yeah, I think there, there's so many things. Just being, I was going to sound cliched, but being comfortable with, with, with being uncomfortable. Yep. Just not knowing, okay, here's where we're going, here's where we are now. Don't really know how we're going to get there just yet, but we're going to just give it a go and see and see where we go. It's, an, it's interesting you say that, and I'll tell you why. I've now run my own company for 18 odd years. I've recently just started training for a half Ironman. Don't ask me why, it's a ridiculous concept in my <laughs> age. Anyway, I have. And I have an online coach, and he tells me what to do every day through Training Peaks, right? So I get up every morning, I look at Training Peaks, and it tells me what to do, and I just go and do it. And I love that, yeah. because never in my last 18 years have I woken up and had someone tell me what to do, and I know I can just go and execute it, and it's done. So I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. That being comfortable with being uncomfortable is something that just happens over time. Um, and I think most first-time founders are not comfortable with that at all. And then you become so used to it, you don't even realize how nice it is to be told what to do sometimes. Um, so I, I very much understand that. What about yourself? Um, I guess the strength is probably the sales perspective um, coming from uh, building a marketplace, having an understanding of when we're building the MVP, what we need to build. Because marketplaces are different because there's three sides to them, right? There's, there's, it's, it's a bit more complicated than just a product. Yeah, very much. Um, communicating the message, dealing with investors, I feel like that's some of my strengths, but I think uh, he'll probably tell you <laughs> probably the, the hardest stuff is is uh, letting go of things, you know, and uh, understanding <laughs> it's your, your co-founders and um, and you're there to support one another. And <laughs> <laughs> Can I we answer it have, for him? Have you had any <laughs> massive doozies? Uh, no, we've been pretty we good. Do, we don't have doozies. We have, I mean... We argue. We argue a lot. Yeah, yeah, heaps, yeah. 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 Well, that, well, is, it, is it arguing or debating? Because it's two very different things. Both. Both. We're both pretty <laughs> stubborn, so... Awesome. No, Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think always... it's been healthy in some way, though. We just we battle it out and then it's over. Yeah. <laughs> it's over. Just boom. Yeah. Done. Well, as long as you get to a resolution, as long, it's when you get to a stalemate, right? That's the problem. Have you got, have you got a shareholders agreement? Just checking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it, we do. We do. Cl we clash. But I think uh, the, the beauty about us is we clash for the right reasons. Is we're not trying to say my opinion's better, your opinion's better. It's always about what's what, what objective are we trying to achieve, and, and it's more about strategy or direction. And I think that uh, the outcome's always been great for us. We've always been able to go, okay, we're going to do it this way this time, and then we go that way, and it seems to work out. Okay. So well, that's good. Mm. All right, last question. Um, you're going to grow. This video will go on forever and ever and ever, so people will watch this video. If in the future you start to hire people directly in, in, or people want to come and are attracted to what you're doing, why would someone want to come and work for you guys? How would you describe that in your own words? Work for us. Because uh, that will happen. It'll have to. Yeah. <laughs>
I think the cool thing about what we're building is we're right in front of this wave of, of a lot of change. You look at iOS updates, you look at the elimination of third-party cookies. Yep. It, there's, there's so much change going on and we're trying to be just in front of that or ride with it. Yep. And very rarely do, do these things happen, right? And I think the product that we're building, the vision that we've got, to be a part of something like that would be fucking really cool, man. And you might have to wait another five, seven, ten years to get an opportunity to create a business that will have that type of impact again. I think you're right. I think the last one was mobiles, right? You think about mobiles, like ring tunes, SMS marketing, that was a GPS. wave. Yeah, that came out of nowhere, right? Yep. Do you remember all the, um, the ridiculous amount of money you'd spend downloading um, ringtones? Just ridiculous. <laughs> they were yeah. awful. And you'd hate them an hour later and you'd hate yourself as well. But that was a huge wave. Yep. And that was it's a similar thing. It, imp it impacts everyone. Why do they call them cookies? Does anybody know here? I don't even know. No, I don't know. But question. I think you're right. I think that whole, that, that is a massive wave. What about you? Why do you think someone will come work for you? Yeah, to add to that, I think uh, the p kind of person that I think we'd hire first initially would be just someone with a really good attitude, someone that's hungry, and they'd be able to really try things. They'd be able to come up with ideas and just bring it to us and, go, and we'd say, yeah, give it a go. That's on video now, by the way. You're say, hold up there, mate. I, I'm, I'm going to wait for it idea. now. You're going to be having your first ever like review, and they're going to be asking you for more money. And they said, look, first, I know you're fast and loose. And second, you've said here, if I bring it to you, you're going to say, yes, you just did that, right? They'll bring that up. They'll play it to you in there. say, this is my idea. <laughs> you've got nowhere to go. Look, it's exciting. I agree with you very much. I think you're on the cusp of, of just an, a phenomenal change in marketing and laws. And I think it's going to keep going. And I think it's going to get greater and bigger. And AI is going to come and change it again and it's, 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 it's going to be continuous and you are just ahead of that wave you've just got to stay there right um, and, I, and I hope you do look we'll definitely get you back on in another year or so and see where you because you, you're so young what you'll hap what'll happen in the next year or, or 18 months will be mind-blowing and I think we're going to see a huge again I think your timing's almost perfect in that you're not after funding now but I reckon by the time you're ready for funding it'll all be getting released again because there's a lot of money sitting there ready deployed and you'll probably catch that wave again so Timing's everything, as they say. So look, well done. Um, I love it. I think it's great. And I can't wait to see where you guys go with it. And uh, we'll definitely have you back on. And I think your episode number, I oh, hope not here, but I think your episode number 97 or 98. So you're close to 100th episode as well. Okay. So it's iconic in itself. But more importantly, what it means is when we hit our 100th episode, we're going to have a party for all the first 100 episodes. So you've just got in. Otherwise, you'd have had to wait years for Perfect. this one. <laughs> so that's good. good. So we'll get you back down to Sydney as well. Unreal. There you go. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show, guys, and look forward to seeing what happens. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next week.